Hi FlossTube friends, welcome back. It has been a few months again. Um, I think my last video, well it was, I know it was in 2019. Um, I mean, let's just acknowledge the massive world event that has taken place since I last saw you. That's right, I turned 40. Um, it happened in March, uh, the world went crazy. Uh, I guess they weren't ready for it. I, however, was. I knew it was coming, so um, I just wanted to fill you in on that in case you notice that I look a little wiser and more mature. Um, that is that is why. Um, so that was fun. Um, moving on. World event acknowledged. Um, also would like to acknowledge all of the videos that have been coming out with uh, stash dives and whip parades and desert island stitching and designer parades, all of that good stuff. I have been loving those. Thank you so much to everyone who has taken the time to make those videos and to entertain us with that wonderful content. Um, keep it coming. I love it. Okay, everything knowledge. I have notes. I have notes this time because I have a lot to talk about and show you. Um, guaranteed I will forget at least half of it um, because I am looking at myself on camera and it's awkward. Um, that's okay. I'm going to do my best. So um, I thought I'd give you a breakdown of what we're going to talk about today. First, I'm going to show you some fully finished objects. Then I am going to show you um, some things that I have finished that aren't fully finished yet, obviously. Um, then I'm going to show you some stuff that I have worked on that are not finished yet. And then, um, let's see, that's it. Oh, then haul. Oh, there's plenty of that. You're welcome. Um, and uh, let's see, haul. Oh, um, oh, and then I will update you on my dog, Dusty, for those of you who care. I know not everyone does, which I don't understand because he's like, he's the everything, right? But um, I will save that um, until the end, but spoiler alert, he is doing well, so um, don't be worried about that. Um, so let's get into it. See, I already feel like I forgot stuff in the breakdown. I think I will tell you my plans for May as well at some point. Um, the notes aren't helping me. I'm still, it's still like, it's too weird. I, I can never remember. I mean, okay, we're just going to go into it. We're just going to go into it. Okay. Fully finished objects are first. So, um, you know what, if you haven't been with me since say fall of 2018, you are going to think it's, you might think it's a little weird that I have a ton of Halloween stuff um, to show. Well, a ton, but um, I have a lot of Halloween projects. I, um, I love Halloween stitching and fall stitching. Um, that's my season of joy right there. Um, I don't know why I've just always loved Halloween since I was a kid. That's just the favorite holiday for me. Um, and back in 2018, um, Emily from Eclectic Possessions and Michelle from Cozy Egg, stitchy friends of mine, were doing dark October stitching every year, um, where you st stitch uh, fall and Halloween stuff in the month of October. They also do dark 13 stitching, where you stitch something dark every 13th of the month. Um, anyways, I was, uh, that October was coming up, and um, the Stitcher's Coven on Facebook, um, which is a lovely group that I'm a part of, is... Um, you know, was getting geared up for Dark October stitching. I was like, you know what? I just I can't take it anymore. I have all of these wonderful Halloween patterns I want to stitch. I am going to start a new one every day in October. This was in 2018, and I did that. I started a fall or Halloween project every day in October, um, 31 days in a row. I call it Dark October Insanity, um, which is what it was. It was crazy. It's it was not like me. I had 10 whips at the time, um, and I don't regret doing it. It's um, Halloween stitching is comfort stitching for me, and I have whips that are ready to be worked on at any moment when I feel like it. Um, but it's a lot of, it's a lot. Um, so if you see, um, you know, that's why it ended up being like three quarters of my projects are now Halloween. So um, I, I mentioned that because all of these FFOs that I have to show you today are fall or Halloween. And I'm trying to get a little more creative in my finishes because um, I have so many Halloween projects that will be finished over time and um, I'm not going to frame all of them. I don't know where I'd put them all. 
So um, let's just get into it. That's a lot of babbling already. Um, okay, so the first one I'm going to show you, I um, I don't know where the pattern is for. I might have passed it on already, but it's Scary 2 by Plum Street Samplers. And I made it into a pin cushion with the chenille, chenille trim that came with the kit. Um, all of this are the called for materials because it, it did come as a kit. Um, I put some homespun fabric on the back and um, Fauna does this. She does like her initials in the year and a little patch, but she does the frayed edges and glues it on, which I think I might do next time. I kind of like the look of that more, um, but I just whip stitched it on and put this little rusty safety pin there. And I've got a rusty safety pin here. And then I have these two cute little brass acorn charms on the top corner that I sewed on there. Um, the acorn charms are from an Etsy shop called Fallen Angel Brass. And the, um, the rusty safety pins are from a, um, an Etsy shop I like called Fiddlesticks Designs. Um, and I also used um, Stacy Nash's method of uh, using walnut crystals, mixing them with water, and then taking a paintbrush and painting them on the fabric, and then um, blow drying it. She does blow dry or um, in the oven. I do not use the oven much in my domestic life, to be honest. So I wasn't about to stick my project in there because I just didn't. I just I, I worried things would not go well for my my oven, my house my loved ones. So the blow dryer seemed like a good idea. Um, and I just kind of painted it randomly. I did it on a few projects and um, I'd never done it before. And it was um, easy and fun. And um, so what I did was I bought the walnut crystals on Amazon. They come in a little jar. They're, arc they're um, acid free, um, which I liked. And so um, First, I mixed the walnut crystals with water, warm water, as it said on the bottle. And then I took a scrap of linen and painted it on there. And it was super dark because that was the walnut crystals suggestion for um, measurements. And they weren't intending it for putting on your cross stitch. So then I reversed that and just took a warm cup of water and sprinkled it and reversed it. I didn't reverse it. I took a warm cup of water, I sprinkled some walnut crystals in and then tested it and um, did a much lighter amount, and I liked that. And then I just kind of randomly blotched it in places, like, yeah, so. And then I just um, couched this chenille on. I do need to do the Vana thing of taking a toothbrush and fluffing it up, um, but I don't have, I don't save my used toothbrushes. And then I need like a chenille toothbrush, chenille specific toothbrush. I gotta figure that out. Um, and then I, uh, this homespun, I think is Primitive Gatherings. Um, I think I got it from Fat Quarter Shop. So that is Scary 2 by Plum Street Samplers. FFO'd. Also, I sewed it with a machine and then um, hand sewed the bottom shut. That's where I stuffed. Oh, and I stuffed it with sawdust. Whew, all the details. So much information for one pin cushion. But there you go. I enjoy how it turned out. The next one is another Halloween pin cushion. This is, oh, I do have the pattern here. This is Halloween Pin Keep by Stacy Nash. I love those guys, they are adorable. Um, I stitched this on a gray fabric, 40 count, I think, or maybe 36. It's a Lakeside Linens, I don't remember which one, but um, here we go. This is also stuffed with sawdust. I also used the Stacy Nash method of the walnut crystals. Um, and by her suggestion in the pattern, I did um, a cross stitch, like I did X's along the trim. I, I made them pretty big and they're not like, they're just rectangles. Anyway, it's supposed to look, you know, like Halloween and handmade. These little black brass pins are also from Fallen Angel Brass. Um, they're not pointy, really. You kind of got to dig them in there. Stuffed with sawdust, in case I didn't say that. This um, is a homespun I purchased from Kittredge Mer Mercantile on Etsy. Um, they have a lot of cute ones. Um, and yeah, I love these guys. I think they're so cute. So, Halloween Um, Next. 
next up, Autumn, I had a couple, two smalls from Autumn Splendor um, by Brenda Gervais. I have done the pumpkin, which I've shown in the past. Um, and so this time I did this one and this one. They have names. I can't remember them off. I think it's Homestead Halloween Pin Keep. I can't remember this one. Um, so here's the little birdie one. Um, the, uh, yeah, so I, I stitched that. Um, this was a finish since the last time I saw you. Um, I had just used some wool. I mean, it follows, I just followed the directions of the pattern. I changed some of the flosses. Um, one of the drawbacks of this whole, uh, October, dark October insanity was that I used stuff from my stash, not a drawback, but um, I think I converted things in some places. I didn't like leave the threads with the projects. I didn't make great notes. So I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know why I chose the colors I did at the time, but when I went back to finish them, I just chose colors that worked to finish them. Um, wool and buttons here, the buttons I, probably got an estate sale or something and the um the wool is for my stash the rusty more rusty safety pins from fiddlesticks designs um this is like a dyed ribbon from fiddlesticks designs and i ruched it um i didn't know what i was doing i just kind of sat there and i know my fingers hurt by the end and it took me forever and then afterwards i was like you know i bet vana has a tutorial on this and she does and next time i will follow that instead but um but it worked out I also machine sewed this and then sewed the bottom by hand. Um, it always cracks me up when people look closer at the image when it's, it's right here. Um, so yeah, corners weren't perfect, but, and then I, never mind, I guess I stuffed it and sewed it up around the back. Anyway, legacy. I think this is legacy linen. Um, so that's that one. And then the other one, see, this is this long and narrow pin cushion. And then I didn't end up making, I haven't made that crow. So I didn't have that to put on it or buttons, yada, yada. I decided to try something a little different. Um, I had some wooden spools, just random wooden spools from sewing thread um, that I picked up at an estate sale. And I um, found one in that pretty fit the, the piece almost perfectly. And I painted it black and um, I wrapped this around it and stitched it up here. Um, I did have to cover a few stitches. And you can see it's not perfect. Um, it's like maybe two stitches too tall for it, but um, it worked out. There you go. Isn't that cute? And then these um, little scissors that my friend Michelle gifted me a while back, they fit right in there. Voila! So one day, this will need to be part of a adorable vignette. My vignette game is not... Well, it's wanting, let's be honest. So I will get some help from friends. Um, all right. That's, oh yes, and then um, this one is a is like haul new start finish FFO all in one. It is spells by Stacy Nash. Um, I love that, and so I made it. It's an older pattern, I think, and her directions were very clear. And here we go. Um, I love this fabric. It killed me to cut it up for this, but it was just too perfect. It's a Lakeside Linens. Oh, I want to say Vintage Midnight. Um, the homespun I also picked up from Kittredge Mercantile. It's lined with it on the inside. The floss is just uh, Caramel Corn by Gentle Arts, as it calls for. Had it in my stash. Um, I think I picked up the chart from Kitten Stitcher, and yeah, it's fun. So those are my FFOs. All right, next up are some finishes. Um, first one is this very small one. This was um, one of my dark October insanity starts. Um, Enchanted Crow by Threadwork Primitives. And I finished it. Um, I just need to, but I need to FFO it. It'll be a little pin cushion. Um, I just haven't completely decided what it's gonna look like yet. So I need to do that. Uh, next one, this is another Dark October 
start. Um, this one was really fun. This is Halloween Barnyard by Not Forgotten Farm. Um, colors usually aren't accurate in the picture. Pictures aren't the greatest on these charts, but um, I like it because it's kind of like a mystery until you stitch it because then you're like, oh, that's how it looks. Um, and I just finished this one and I love it. It's so fun. It's so cute. Um, yeah, so it's a witch riding a donkey on Halloween. And uh, this is on a 36 count, one over two. Um, fabric is from Ships Manor. It's called November Haze. And um, the all of the threads are they called for DMC. So I need to decide how I'm going to finish this one or FFO it. I haven't decided yet. And now, the piece de resistance. Um... In my world, anyway. My baby. And Oofendel. I, um, this, I, uh, bought this chart from Hands Across the Seat when it first came out. It has since come out again, this one and her sister Isabel. I'm so happy they came out again so that everyone who wants to can stitch them. I highly recommend it. This is a very fun stitch. Um, I, uh, received the fabric and the silks as a very generous Christmas gift from my father back in 2017 for Christmas, and I started it that day, and I have now finished her. Present to you, and Oofendel. Um, God, I, I just really enjoyed stitching her. Um, this is the first reproduction sampler I have stitched. I, um, yeah, there's, uh, what can I say? I, um, I changed out the verse. Um, it just wasn't really anything that spoke to me. Um, I chose, I didn't want to, um, pick something that, you know, didn't fit. I wasn't gonna, you know, like white snake lyrics or something. But, um, I, uh, I found the quote is, is, um, I've only, it's an anonymous attribution. Um, I, I've seen it, uh, think like it's some books from early 1900s, late 1800s. I did not discover the quote in those books. I just tried to find an attribution before I showed it to you. But this quote is on a um, needlework press pattern um, that's very cute that I saw the model for at the attic. And I will insert a picture here. And I will, um, I'll read you the verse. Um, it says, "'Tis friends who make this desert world to blossom as the rose, strew flowers o'er our rugged path, pour sunshine o'er our woes." Um, and then I, uh, I saved Anne's, Anne's name for last. Um, the, uh, I call this centerpiece Anne's fiddly bits. Um, they, uh, it's like, um, there's a whole process to this whole area. It requires attention and thought, and um, I didn't find it fun necessarily. And I stupidly saved it for the last part of the sampler. Don't do that if you're stitching this. <laughs> Maybe get it over around the middle part. Um, the uh, the um, the writing is all uh, over one. I did um, half cross. Um, if you're Stitching with the materials, it's 40 count linen, uh, lakeside linen, and it's a Verisois silks, and the Verisois silks are pretty thick, so it's near impossible to do a full cross um, over one. Um, there are some over one motifs at the top as well. Those are also done with a half cross. Um, this basket down here, I call this Elena's basket because um, I feel like Anne was the younger sister, and I feel like this is totally a younger sister basket. Like, she followed all the rules, and then she got to the basket, and she's like, you know what? I'm using every color, okay? Try to stop. Um, I did leave out one thing. Let me get a close-up picture of the fiddly bits. So I did change the quote, and then you see these little dots? These are like, three uh, little sets of three satin stitches um 
I didn't feel that they added anything and I knew they were going to be a royal pain because I'd have to start and end them um, each. And I like to keep it clean because um, I don't want anything to, you know, I don't want carried threads to show. Um, I don't want to put any kind of limitations on myself when this gets framed. So I decided to leave those out. Um, there's, I'm sure there's, there's, you know, mistakes here and there. I'm not going to point them out to you. Um, so I, um, I know that there are a lot of people out there who are either stitching this or interested in stitching this. Um, my friend Laura included, and I, Laura, I got the message through Michelle that you would like some help when you get to the fiddly bits. Um, I took a lot of pictures and, um, I thought if people are interested, I would be more than happy to do um, a video where I talk about this piece um, in more detail and talk about the process of this and show the pictures and all of that. Um, I am not going to do that all here. I don't want to give a bunch of unsolicited advice. <laughs> um, so I would rather hear from you guys. If there are people out there who feel that that would be helpful, um, keeping in mind that this is my first reproduction sampler, so I'm definitely no professional or pro at this. Um, be more like an idiot's guy. <laughs> um, the chart is actually very clear too with instructions on how to do it. I just followed that. But sometimes, you know, it can be helpful just to see how someone who is not an expert did it and got through it. So if that is would be helpful to you or interesting to you, um, please let me know in the comments below and I'll make a separate little um, floss tube extra video about it. If not, that is totally cool. Not my feelings are not hurt. I will just do a um, I'll do a PowerPoint slideshow for Laura when I see her. Um, so yeah, that is Anne. I um, plan on having her professionally framed. Um, and yeah, I can't believe she's done. It was wonderful, and I've been seeing people stitch her, and I'm so happy to see that because I know I loved it. So. Yay! All right, so that wraps up my finishes. All right, next up we have um, the whips that I've worked on since I saw you last that were not finishes. So I worked on Anne um, quite a bit since I've seen you and since I last saw the video. And um, yeah, when I needed a little like in between and comfort stitching, I worked on Halloween Barnyard, which is fun. Um, so first up, this is Garden of Erie by Plum, Plum Street Samplers. I didn't work a ton on this, but I worked some, so I figured I'd show you. I'm sure you've seen this pattern before. It's adorable. I'm stitching mine on 40 Count Murky. Um, this is another Dark October start. Um, I guess I converted, <laughs> but I've only stitched with one color so far, which is, um, let's see, well, I'm almost out of it. It's Ganache by Ship's Manor. Um, this is charted in silks with a DMC conversion. I am just, so far I've been converting to overdyed. Um, anyway, here it is. Um, I've just, I've stitched the trees, like the tree and branch, the trunks and branches and the outline for the bottom border. So I have, uh, some fun stuff next time I pick this up. Oh, this has been fun. So yeah, so it's Garden of Erie. Next up is a, another um, Plum Street Sampler Halloween pattern, Jack's Bash. I am sure you've seen this many times. A lot of people have stitched this or are stitching this for good reason. It's adorable. I just love the border, especially, but I love the whole thing. I always think I have more done on this than I do every time I pick it up, so I need to put some work into this some more work into this. Um, I'm stitching it on, what am I stitching it on? Oh, I have my threads in this cute uh, primitive stitcher book that Marlene gifted me. Not fun. I am stitching this on Extra Designs Gold Sand, 40 count. There you go. I'm using the, I believe I'm, yeah, I'm using the called for Threads. Think, right? Yes. Calls for Gentle Arts, which is my favorite. So I'm using those. Um, but yeah, they're in my little, my little book. All right. 
Next up is another Halloween pattern. This is a Stacy Nash one. This is Jack's House Pin Keep. Uh, my friend Maddie loaned me this. She has stitched it. And I um, guess I got creative um, when I started this. And now I'm kind of figuring it out as I go along. Um, I converted it. So I'm stitching it on blue. And then changing some of the colors and I <laughs> I took out the face of the pumpkins and yeah but I like it I like how it's uh turning out I think I was trying to um well there's another pink heat from Stacy Nash it's on blue fabric and it's really pretty and I think I was trying to like meld the two but anyway so now I'm just I'm trying to choose the colors as I go along, and um, and I'm enjoying it. It's pretty. So, oh, that one doesn't have a ton left. All right, let's see. Um, Country House Sampler by the Sampler Company, Brenda Keys. Yeah, Country House Sampler. Um, I started this with my friend Maddie for her birthday a couple years ago, I think. Um, I am stitching it over one on 25 count even weave, which I think is what it calls for. Um, in the called for DMC. I stupidly cut my fabric a while back and, um, so you'll see funny fabric sewed to the edges. Um, but here is where, there's my fabric, um, here is where I at, um, so I still have the entire border and that whole top row up there, but at the moment I am working on filling in all of this grass. It goes in rows of colors, so I've done two rows so far. Um, I've stitched everything else that's in the grass, I just need to do the fill in. Um, yeah. And finally is my um, my other reproduction sampler that I'm working on. This is um, Harriet Taylor 1842 at a Scarlet House. Um, I am stitching this with my friend Angela. We met at a um, retreat at the attic, and we both fell in love with this and cut it up. And I have I love stitching on this one. And here's where I'm at. I finished the border and the text and the motifs at the top, and now I'm working on stitching this scene down here. So basically, yeah, all of this. It's kind of a graphic look. It's different. The border is my favorite part. I loved stitching that. Um, and now I'm having fun filling in her house at the bottom. I am stitching this with the called for um, NPIs and I'm stitching it on um, vintage pearl barley from Lakeside Linens and it's absolute heaven. Oh my god. I see why people use NPIs now. Um, it's like butter. So I love working on her. All right, so that does it for my whips. Um, plans. So Mania is coming up. Um, I have been an avid fan of Stitch Mania um, since, I want to say the second year, 2016. So I think this is, a, yeah, 16, 17, 18, 19. This will be the fifth year that I am an active watcher of Stitch Mania. I don't participate in Stitch Mania. Um, uh, Lynn, Stephanie from Lindy Stitches coined the phrase or term years ago, um, Stitch Sania, and I throw that word around a lot. But this, but now she is actually like defined Stitch Sania. It's wonderful. Go check out her video um, if you would like to do Stitch Mania, but not start a million things. Um, it's very like goal oriented. You achieve goals, and then you have new starts on the weekends, which is lovely. Um, I. I'm not doing that, but I always think in my head every year, I'm like, I'm doing Stitch Sania, because 
it's like not doing mania, but still here. <laughs> um, I love watching people's mania. I will say that every year I get excited around May. I get excited to watch all the stitch mania plans. Um, I just don't start a million things. Um, and I also, I just don't do any of the methods. I don't really make plans for it, but, um, this year I'm not doing stitch mania, but, um, my friend Sue, hi Sue. Um, I met Sue at stitch nanigans, um, in Arizona last year, the retreat and that's retreat supposed to be going on this weekend, but obviously, um, postponed. Um, but when we were there, we both kitted up a beautiful sampler. I even made it a, its own project bag a little while back. Um, and that sampler is Luz Gonzalez, 1851 from Samplers Remembered. The lovely, lovely Laura that you know as Serial Starter, from Brenda and the Serial Starter, um, gifted me this chart. And um, I am going to stitch it and I'm going to gift it back to you, Laura, because I think you need to stitch it too. There is... Um, specialty stitches along the top, which I think she was a bit turned off of at the time, but I think she could, she would be totally cool with it now. And they're really just like basically satin stitches. Um, and I have looked through the chart and they are very clear instructions. So just so you know, you're still stitching this. Um, this is beautiful. The model is at the attic. Ugh. Um, Maddie has been bullying me. I mean, encouraging me to make this my next reproduction sampler. Um, I didn't want to start another reproduction sampler before I finished Anne, um, but I have finished Anne. And um, Sue and I had said a while back that we would stitch this together, start it together anyway, at least, um, since we both kitted it up. And um, she contacted me just today and said, what are you doing for May? How about we start this? And I was like, you know what? I am ready to start this. So I am super excited. Um, I kitted it up with the call for a Verisoise when we were at the attic. Look at those bright colors. Look at that orange. Oh my God. It's crazy. Um, and I'm going to stitch it on a piece of um, light exemplar from Lakeside Lens. And uh, yeah, very excited for that. So I will start with the boring black alphabet at the top. That will probably go quickly. And then these parts are like motifs that are just gorgeous, but they um, need some, require some focus. So I'm gonna start that in May, that's my plan. Um, yeah, very excited for that. I have some sweet gifts that I have received that I would like to share with you. Um, we had a, uh, right at the beginning of March, we had a meetup of the NorCal Stitchers and Jen from Delicious Threads made us these awesome needle minders. She has a website, deliciousthreads.com, and she makes, custom, she makes these special needle minders. What am I trying to say? Um, she makes original needle minders, so you're not going to... You're not going to like see these somewhere else. Um, not, I can't talk. The woodcuts. You're not going to see the woodcuts in other shops. She makes them herself. They're amazing. And it was so generous of her to bring us all these. Um, and she designed them herself, which I thought was very impressive. Uh, my friend Michelle from um, Sacramento, California. Um, she gifted me for Christmas. Look at this pretty swath. Swa stuff, 103, beautiful greens, DMC and the fancy the ring and the, all the bling bling. Um, well, here's the bling bling. Um, I assume that's pronounced classy. Here's why. It's rose gold. Ooh, classy. Look at those scissors. And that thread cutter. I think you're supposed to use those in a vignette. I have yet to take a class on vignettes, but I will. I mean, I guess I should also use them for cutting. But they're so fancy. They're so classy. Thanks, Michelle. I love them. And then 
totally expected, but Lorraine from Rags of Stitches USA stitched this beautiful pin pillow as a gift for someone, and I was a big admirer of it. Mary, this is the Primitive Merry Christmas Pillow from Abby Rose Designs. I'm sure you recognize this one. Um, she did a beautiful job stitching it, and then she uh, she finished it like this, and then she had like this pretty um, ornament holder that she put it on, and um, I was a big fan. And then she went and sent it to me, and not just the chart, but she sent me ribbon for finishing it, and Rusty Bells. Every Prim Stitcher needs Rusty Bells. So thank you so much, Lorraine. I am definitely stitching it this year for Christmas. Very excited. So that was awesome. Um, it's me. So you know what we got up next is oh! um, it's been a while. I'm 40. I can do what I want. So let's get into it. Um, there was this point where everyone was freaking out and buying toilet paper. Um, at that time, I freaked out too and bought a lot of Stacy Nash patterns. Um, I feel like I got the better end of the bargain there. Um, so, who's wiser? I don't know. Uh, probably, it's me. So, um, this was before market, um, Stacey Nash closed her Etsy shop and I don't know why. And, um, that's when I got a little freaked out because she has, there's older charts of hers. There's several older charts of hers that I really like that, um, as far as I can tell are not carried through the distributor. All I did was look on Hoffman. Um, I don't know if there's like some secret that retailers have where they have a secret source, but um, I was nervous because I had always relied on them being available through her Etsy shop. Etsy shop was closed. So um, luckily Kitten Stitcher had a lot, has a, quite a few of those designs that I wanted. So I bought some of them. One of them was spells, which I already showed you. Um, there's the companion piece, potions. I, um, I bought these patterns and then I went through my stash and found materials for them. So they are kitted, but I didn't like order all the materials. I just uh, took stuff from my stash. So this is spells and um, I want to stitch this up as a companion and make it into the pouch as well. This one I've been wanting forever, Halloween Jack sewing roll. Wait a second, did I buy this? No, I, this was in the past. I think I bought this in the past. I might have shown this to you before. Um, I know Jessie Marie stitched it, um, and it's beautiful, and um, yeah, I'm going to stitch it, and I'm going to make it into a sewing roll. <laughs> um, morning tree sewing bag. What's that? I don't know if I will make it into a sewing bag or not. Black work pinky. Oh, I've loved this one for so long. And Brenda has this done. Tomato Harvest Sewing Bag. Um, and she had hers FFO'd by Joy. Is that Carolina Stitcher? Anyway, it's beautiful. She didn't do hers on the dark fabric. I, I do plan on doing it on dark fabric. Um, what was the fabric I had? Hold on. It's a 32 count. Um... Oh, this is Slate by Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. Um, yes, I love it. I don't know, I love, you have to check out Brenda's finish. Oh, I'm sure you've seen it. Um, I loved how hers is done, so I don't know how I will FFO. I'm like talking about FFOing it, I haven't even started stitching it. So Anyway, I love this pattern, I'm glad I finally have it. Um, I love the booklets that Stacey Nash has. I have one that I got in a stash unloading site. It's I think it's called Love Letters. Um, Kitten Stitcher had two others that I have been coveting for some time. And so I bought them. Merry Halloween and Good Tidings. And these both have several um, small projects in them. I would love to have the other booklets one day. Those will be unicorns until I come across them. So, yes. All right, so last thing to Nash. Um, this is Mary Bordis. Bordis? 
yeah, it's just a black marking sampler. I think it's adorable. It has all these crowns. Um, Maddie and uh, Megan from White Eyed Stitching Child did a sell on a black sampler. Now I'm forgetting the name. It's by Kitten Stitcher or Shakespeare's Peddler. I can't believe it. I want to say Harriet something. Anyway, I think that got in my head and made me need this. It's beautiful. Um, Thistles and Spells Pin Keep. My focus is fine. These things focus me. I think they are. Okay. And then this one um, is still available, but I have wanted it forever, and it was $10, and I threw it in there. This is 12 Days of Christmas Sewing Roll. I just think it's adorbs. Love it. Yeah. That was Kitten Stitcher. Oh, and then I bought one more chart from her um, ever since she finished the um, Birds and Berries on one piece of fabric. I've been in love with it. And so I thought I should purchase that from her. And she's the one that made me want it. This is beautiful. I really want to stitch this soon. Um, okay. And then market came. And um, I don't know if I should share this secret, but I will. Jen Stitching Niche is so on top of it when it comes to market. I learned this last year. She goes, her and her posse, and they post things from market on their website. They make shipping labels from market. Like they're so fast. So I just go to her shop and I see what she has like that market weekend that I want. And then she had like so much, um, but I, I kept it to the two that I had to have then and there. Um, if I had to pick a favorite from market, I think it would be this Newcastle bouquet. I think this is absolutely gorgeous i love the colors i love the design i it's just different too and it's just oh it's beautiful i'm trying to collect the flosses um but having trouble getting some of them that's okay because i need to just wait hold my roll a, a little um so i will slowly collect floss um i think i want to stitch it on havana Weeks Dye Works, which is a bit darker than this. That one I had to have, and then another Stacy Nash. Um, stables at Hollyberry Farm, of course, to round out my Hollyberry Farm collection of charts. I only stitched one so far. Love this. And um, Jen had another one that was on my list for Stacy Nash. <laughs> that I don't think is available from the distributor anymore. That is the Martha Agnes sampler roll. A bunch of ladies stitched this. Diana, Michelle Bendy, oh, several others. I'm so sorry. A lot of people. Um, and it's, oh, uh, I think also Megan from White Eyes Stitching Child. Anyway, it's, it's gorgeous and I wanted it and I got it. All right, up next. Um, Okay, so during market, <laughs> oh, March, um, during market, uh, uh, McKenna did a, um, a sale, a live sale um, from the attic, or in her, I think it was in her group, live from the attic. No, not, it's not what it's called, last chance, attic last chance, and it'll work. Anyway, um, she sold a bunch of attic patterns from the attic that were all 25% off, and I was definitely down for that. So, a couple more on that Stacey Nash list of her older patterns that I wanted came up, and I was very excited. Mary's Work Sampler Bag. I think that is so adorable. And then this one, man, Jen's, Jen from Jen Stitching Niche has stitched this. It is in the background in her videos, and it's like staring at me every time. I'm like, I, I need to stitch that. It's also in Stacey Nash's logo. That is the Grace Bridges Sampler. It is funky and it is awesome and I love it. And I want it on my wall too. So I got that, that was exciting too. A few more that I got from McKenna during that sale were the Coverlit Candle Mat from the Scarlet House. Strawberry House from the Scarlet House. Birds and the Bees from Carriage House Samplings. Tonight is Halloween from Kathy Barrick. 
and a Quaker study for carriage house samplings. I love this. Um, you can't tell I'm trying to spread the love <laughs> across a few different shops. So next up was 3L Threads for Market Hall. Um, I, from um, Trisha, I purchased some more Stacey Nash. I have a problem. Um, but uh, I don't want to be cured. This is Haunted Stitches Needlebook. And then I loved the um, Velvet Needlebooks. This is Velvet Pumpkin and Velvet Pear. She gets her, Stacey Nash gets her velvet from Blackberry Primitives, but they don't have any velvet for sale right now. Um, they don't have any up on their site. Um, both of them on the back say Bartlett as the color. That's a typo, I'm sure. This, I think, is Sweet Potato. I think she copied and pasted the contents. But whatever. I'll figure it out. I, I think all the accurate stuff is on the inside. Um, but these are beautiful, and I would love these. Love to have those. So I want to make those one day. And I also, from Trisha, purchased We Live in Hope from Blackbird Designs. Then from Abby at Top Knot Stitcher, I purchased My Heart Can Rest. My friend Michelle stitched this. It is gorgeous. I also purchased Little Birds, which is not little at all. It is huge, and it's beautiful. And then I bought um, the Sewing Club book, which you've all seen. I have already got my project bag ready for it. Um, isn't this fabric pretty? I feel like I... I feel like I purchased, I got this fabric because of Lisa Kindred Stitcher. Like this looks like something I would have stolen from her craft room. Um, and I have been working on collecting the massive amount of threads for that book. Um, some I had in my stash, some I bought from um, Fiddlesticks Designs on Etsy, some I bought from Sassy Jacks. Um, so again, spreading the love. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to start those or anything out of there one of these days coming up. Um, and then when I was buying the floss from Sassy Jacks or some of the floss, I also purchased another one of my favorites from Market, which is Bowerbirds by Hello from Liz Matthews. And um, 1884 Stitchery recently had some like charity sales going on, including some Belle Swass silks. I'm going to stitch this in cinnamon sticks from Belsois on a piece of uh, 40 Cat Lakeside Linens in Vintage Buttercream. So I'm excited to stitch that. I think I'm going to make the birds black. But yeah, I love that. Beautiful. Um, she came out with a lot of beautiful pattern. Turn them on. Amazing stuff. Um, wow. I think that's it for the haul, guys. <laughs> All right, um, I think um, I will go ahead and link all of the shops that I've mentioned today in the notes, um, just because I think all of, all small shops could use the um, a little love right now. So I will do that if you're looking for any of them, and I'm sure they will have been writ written across the screen at some point. Um, so that is my haul. So let's see. Next up, I was going to talk about, um, well, yeah, that's it. I think that's it for cross stitch. Yay. Okay. Well, thank you, um, so much for stopping by to see my cross stitch. Um, but I'm not saying goodbye quite yet. I'm just going to update you on my dog, Dusty. Um, but for those of you who don't care, it's cold. It's cold. But I won't know if you stop the video now, so don't worry about it. My feelings won't be hurt. Um, but, uh, in my last video, I talked about how Dusty had, um, sorry, again, cross stitch done, dog now, Dusty, my moon, my stars, my BFF. Um, he is my, uh, he's a pit bull mix. He is like 10 and a half years old. Um, he, um, had some growths. Um, just small ones, but then he had one um, near one of his hind legs that was um, growing, got 
bigger um, and it was turning red and then it was bleeding a lot and like it would start bleeding and then it would not stop. Um, and so obviously very worrisome. Um, so we brought him to the vet and um, they decided that the best course of action would be surgery um, and then biopsy. So um, Dusty went under the knife. It was, he looked like a little Frankenstein when he was done. He had stitches everywhere. Um, he had like seven growths removed. A lot of them were little small ones, um, but still, you know, stitches and all that. He had to wear a cone. Um, I got him an inflatable cone, which was a godsend. It doesn't work in every situation, but oh my God, way better than like the cone of shame, like the big, I mean, this is still pretty embarrassing, but I'll tell him I said that. Um, but better than the big plastic, which freaks him the heck out. Um, anyway, um, we had the ones, we had two biopsy that were, um, especially that big angry red one. Um, and so at the last, last time I made a video, I asked for your thoughts and prayers for Dusty and to just kind of send the word benign out into the universe. And all of you were so thoughtful. Um, I, I really can't thank you enough. All of you left kind words. Some of you, you know, sent cards. Some of you checked in on me and Dusty and, um, and that really meant a lot to me. So thank you so much. Um, unfortunately benign was not the word. Um, <laughs> malignant was the word. Um, <clears throat> He, uh, that angry red one, um, was cancerous and, um, so, um, he has skin cancer, but, um, so he had, he had all those removed. Um, and then we went to an oncologist to see next, like kind of look into next steps and see where we were at. Um, they did a sonogram on him, um, sonogram, what else? Now they did a bunch of, they did tests on him to see how far the cancer had gotten throughout his body. Um, and very luckily and happily, the cancer did not get to his organs. Um, it was just kind of starting to go below the surface and grow out, um, but we got it just in time. So um, he did not, at that point, he did not have any more cancer in his body, which was a really good thing. That meant <clears throat> we didn't have to look into stuff like, uh, you know, chemo and that kind of thing. Um, and didn't have to explore all those options. I mean, of course I explored them all in my head, um, before we knew that he was okay. So the next step is, um, he, he still gets a little growth. The, the vet said the damage is done to his skin and we keep him out of, we're supposed to keep him out of the sun between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. every day, which really pisses him off. Um, and, um, you know, it's like peak hours for UV light, um, so when we're normally when we're at work every day, he has to stay inside the house, um, which kind of sucks. Um, I had a dog door. I would put in a dog door so he's able to go out in the sun because he loves nothing more than the sun. OK, um, this is poison, obviously. But anyway, so moving forward, we'll bring him a few times a year. He'll have to get um, a cryo treatment where it's basically like they freeze off the little cancerous growths before they can and grow and hopefully avoid surgery um so but you know that's not bad considering the other alternatives um with things in the world right now things are a little crazy and so um i've emailed them like the oncology department pictures and stuff i have not heard back from them it makes me a little nervous um but i'll keep following up with them to figure out when we need to go in to get the cryo treatment but anyway i just wanted that's the um for those of you who care, those of you who are my friends, um, I really appreciate uh, you showing interest and concern about Dusty. I am really happy to report that everything is working out well. He is his normal self now, aside from the restrictions on the peak sun times. Um, he is not feeling any repercussions. Um, and yeah, and we're good. And we're healthy and grateful for that. And um, I'm just grateful for a lot right now. And um I am very grateful for all of you. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you um, for your kindness. And um, I will see you in the next one. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care of yourselves. Bye.